Not all cruise lines are worth cruising on right now, while others are really on the top of their very best game. Get ready to discover which lines I think are today's smart cruising choice category by category. If you're new here, welcome aboard. I'm Gary Bembridge. It's my goal to make it fun and easy to discover, plan and enjoy unforgettable cruise vacations. And these are the lines to do it on. There are four distinct categories in ocean cruising. Let's start with the category that more passengers cruise on than any other. The mass appeal resort value for money cruising segment. It's got a lot going on and one line in my view stands out more than the others. In this category are the lines with large mega ships carrying 3,000, 4,000 or many more passengers. I can usually find a balcony cabin on these cruise lines for between $100 and $200 per person per night, particularly in regions like the Caribbean. Now these lines aim to create a bustling resort experience that appeals to a very wide range of passengers because they must fill these huge ships week after week. They have loads of facilities, attractions like water parks, rock climbing walls, and rides, daily program activities for kids, teens, and adults of all ages. The activities are high energy and very active. There are loads of different things to do day and night. There's also a wide range of cabins on all of these lines catering for all budgets from inside to some of the biggest and most expensive suites at sea. Some of them have created ships within the ship to create closed off neighborhoods for certain types of cruises. Like the Yacht Club on MSC Cruises with card controlled access for premium guests only, which contains all the suites, dedicated restaurant, bar, and even a pool deck. The Haven on Norwegian Cruise Line is basically the same. They though also have an access controlled solo travelers studio area with a dedicated lounge and solo cabins. When it comes to fares, as I mentioned, I'm usually able to get a balcony cabin, depending on the time of the year and the region, between $100 and $200 per person per night. But once on board, there are lots of extras, gratuities, drinks, Wi-Fi, especially dining, and even for some of the activities and events, I can easily spend another $100, $200 a day on board. When it comes to places that these lines go to, it's limited because these ships are big and need ports that can receive these big, huge beasts. And they have to have enough excursions and the infrastructure to cope with and keep the wide range of travelers on them entertained. So they tend to focus on the three main cruising regions, the Mediterranean, Caribbean, and to a lesser degree, Alaska. So what lines are in this group that you should consider? Well, the four biggest lines in terms of passengers carried are in this group, Carnival Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian Cruise Line, and MSC Cruises. In my view, p Cruises, particularly in the UK, are shifting into the big mega ship wide appeal cruising and are more in this category than ever before. So what is the must do line here? I believe based on my experience that it is Norwegian Cruise Line. They not only cater for a wide range of travelers across the ship, but they have those areas within the ship like the Haven for people who want to have that premium experience, very exclusive, and the solo studio as I mentioned for travelers but they have lots of options and they cater for individual groups of travelers really well. So while they have attractions like go-karts and laser tag on their bigger ships, their big strength in my view comes in entertainment and choice on board. They have full on Broadway, West End and Vegas shows like Six, Rock of Ages, Priscilla Queen of the Desert, Choir of Man, Burn the Floor. And these are not simply cruise line review type shows and they're all included in the fair. They also created and lead on the freestyle cruising concept, which means there's lots of choice. There's usually over 20 bars, 20 restaurants. The ships themselves are stylish, they're modern, they feel premium, they're not brash and glitzy. The other very close choice is Royal Caribbean. They are the master of the mega ship. Their ships are enormous, like their new ship, the Wonder of the Seas, the biggest cruise ship in the world that can carry 5,900 
double occupancy, but up to 6,900 when kids are sharing cabins with parents. So if you're more interested in attractions, then they are probably the smarter choice. The ships are enormous, which means they have the space for bigger water parks, ice rinks, water shows, flow riders, indoor skydiving, and so on. But what if you want something less high energy, more traditional, and calling on a wider range of destinations, but without too much more cost? Then premium, classic cruise experience category is for you. And here, there is also a standout line. On this category of lines, I usually pay roughly double for a balcony cabin than in the previous category. So that's between $200 and $400 per person per night. The ships here are smaller, ranging from about 2,000 up to over 3,000 passengers. They have a more traditional classic cruise experience and a daily program of activities that reflect that. They do not have those resort attractions and facilities on board. They're very focused on dining, bars, enrichment talks and events and activities like trivia, quizzes, deck games, and much smaller scale song and dance review production shows. It's more sedate than the previous category for sure. When it comes to accommodation, they also have inside cabins through to suites because they're trying to attract a wide range of travelers who are looking though for a more classic and less resort style cruise. Also like the previous category, there's usually a lot of the same extras to the fare once you're on board. However, there is a trend in this category to shift to more all-inclusive fares. Celebrity have always included fares with gratuities, Wi-Fi and drinks, and others like Princess and Holland America, they now give me the option of bolting on an all-inclusive option. These lines also call on more diverse places than the previous category. Many run world voyages or have exotic voyages down to South America, around Africa, or parts of Asia. They cover all the main territories though, Alaska, Mediterranean, the Caribbean, but they do go further afield. Celebrity cruises, princess cruises, Holland America, Cunard, and even Disney fall into this category in my view. And also the new entrant Virgin Voyages with their modern take on this classic premium experience are also in here. For me, the must-do line is Holland America. It offers a classic experience. It's probably the most sedate in all respects, but it has a phenomenal music walk covering four different music venues, plus the main theater. They have a Rolling Stone rock room, Lincoln Center stage, Billboard on board, B.B. King's Blues Club. They have a great interpretation of a classic experience on board and they have really, really good food. However, the must do if you want a more upbeat and dynamic version to Holland America is Celebrity. They have really interesting new ships with their edge class ships. They have the same classic cruising program as Holland America, but they have a slightly more modern spin and take on it. Of course, Virgin Voyages is an even more modern interpretation, but it's still finding its feet. It's moving along that way. So the smart choice right now is Holland America. And if that's too sedate for you, celebrity, I feel. Many people will argue Cunard Queen Mary 2 Transatlantic is a must do, which it is, but that is an itinerary rather than a whole line choice, I feel. The others can take you more places more often right now. But what if you find this category of ship still too big and you actually have a little bit more money to spend, but you still want to find something classic? This next category is probably my favorite, the luxury small ship experience. This is a step above the premium ships and they cost between $400 and $500 per person per day for a balcony cabin. These are small ships. They range from 200 passengers up to about 1,200 passengers. They're a bit like staying in a boutique hotel, while you could say the premium category I mentioned earlier are more like you know, big, smart hotels in a chain. These are smaller, more intimate experiences, but still a traditional cruise experience, but on a smaller and dialed down scale with much more emphasis on enrichment, port talks, cooking classes, artwork classes, that kind of stuff. The cabin options are much less consistent here. Some of the lines have inside cabins, some have very few balcony cabins and mostly ocean view, and then some like Viking only have balconies and suites. 
As I mentioned, the fares are higher than the premium lines, but more is included though within that, like special dining, some drinks, and one Viking even includes an excursion in every port. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I sometimes find it's actually not that much more expensive than the premium lines like Holland America and Celebrity in the end. When it comes to itineraries, they have more diverse itineraries and they cover large parts of the globe. Many have world voyages as well. They tend not to repeat itineraries. Even if they're in the Caribbean or the Mediterranean, they keep doing different islands or different ports on each itinerary. They're able to call on smaller, more out of the way ports, which makes them different as well. The lines to be considered here include Viking, Oceania Cruises, Windstar, Azamara, and Saga in the UK. For me, the must do is Oceania. The reason I chose Oceania is they offer two distinct options. I can have the even smaller experience with their R-class ships, which take about 695 passengers. And then they have the bigger ships like Marina, Riviera, and their new Vista, which take 1,200, which is a great transition from the larger premium line ships, as it has a similar choice of number of venues often, but much less lines and crowds. Their really big focus is on dining. They claim to have the finest cuisine at sea, and they do have incredible food and amazing specialty restaurants. Very good levels of service. Viking is the other very, very strong contender. They have beautiful new ships. All of the ships are exactly the same, and they're incredibly consistent. So no matter which ship you go on, anywhere in the world, it's basically going to look the same, feel the same, and they also have great dining, as I mentioned, lots of inclusions. And I would say both Oceania and Viking have probably two of the very best afternoon teas at sea. The other plus with Viking is it's an adult only ship, you must be over 18. There is another very exclusive category that is costly, making it even more critical to make a really smart choice in. This is the ultra luxury category, and here you pay significantly more, at least $700 to $800 plus per person per night for their entry level balcony suite. That's seven to eight times more than on the resort mass category ships like Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and Norwegian. The ships carry around 500 to 600 passengers and all cabins are considered suites. So that's also why you find the big leap up in price. In this category, many have butlers. It's an incredibly personalized service and very plush decor. The attention to detail and the quality of everything is really, really high. Now, due to the size of the ships, while the entry-level balcony is considered a suite, it's more like a large balcony cabin in size on many of the other categories. And I can actually book one of the much bigger suites on both the mass and the premium ships for the same price as this entry-level balcony. The itineraries tend to lean towards the exotic, or they go to interesting out-of-the-way places in all those regions. Many also have really expensive world voyages. They cover most areas of the world, even skirting in some cases places like Antarctica. The lines to consider here are Seabourn, Silver Sea, Region Seven Seas. Crystal used to be in this category before their troubles. Also, in fact, lines like Hapag Lloyd from Germany and new entrants like the Ritz-Carlton Yacht Club. Most people choose Region Seven Seas cruises because they usually have the best, most personalized, more formal and detailed onboard experience. And importantly, they have many more inclusions, not only dining, drinks, but multiple excursions are included within the fare in every port, pre-cruise hotel stays, and transfers are normally included. For me though, the must-do is Seabourn. I find Seabourn ships beautiful. They have great service and great food and just great crew. I really like the more informal and personal approach of the more formal style on these ultra luxury lines. It's hard to really put your finger on these different experiences once in the ultra luxury category, and it ends up being about the atmosphere and the style of service. Four categories and over 30 cruise lines to consider. Those are the ones right now that I think make a smart choice. Are there any lines that I would avoid? Yes but that's a topic for another day and another video. If you want to find out a little bit more about the lines that I have recommended as must try, look at this playlist where I have in-depth videos about each of those lines, starting with the one line that if I could only ever go on one line again, 
the one it would be. See you over there.